In this lesson, we're going to take a look at exporting our animated GIFs. And I should go out without saying that when you're actually uh, doing this real for a client or for yourself, for instance, you're going to want to save each one of these animations uh, as PDF files, uh, or PSD files, rather. Uh, that way, if you need to make an adjustment, whether it be for split testing or the client requests to change, everything will be maintained here. Uh, otherwise, the animated GIF it loses all that information. So, I uh, going back here. If we go to our first uh, animation that we created, and go to File Save for Web. As I said, the most important thing to pay attention to if you're designing uh, an animated banner set for a client or yourself is the file size limits. So. AdWords, for instance, I believe the file size cannot be greater than 50 uh, kilobytes. So that means we would have a problem with this one right here, as we see it's 69K. So there, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, if we, we can change the file size in several different ways. So uh, we have all these options up here. Now this will affect the quality, uh, but you have a preview right here that will show you uh, whether it is acceptable or not. So it's basically a trade-off. Um, so if we change the colors, for instance, down to 128, we see a slight uh, improvement in the uh, file size, but not enough. Um, we could also change and, and play around with the dither, which we could see that changes it quite a bit. We could play with this, although the if it goes from interlace to not, um, we can see it does select slightly change it, but not too much the uh, the file size and the quality. Uh, but one of the best ways I would say to export these banners um, so that they're underneath the file size limit would be to play around with the animation timeline. So fewer frames uh, and less tweening in animation obviously means less file size. So as I mentioned before, if we set the timeline frame rate from 30, say down to 20, and we go to save for web, we'll see that we're almost there right off the bat where it was 67 before, but now it's 53. So one of the things, like I said, we could do is just change this down to 128, and now we're under underneath 50, and it still looks good. So for looping options, Obviously, you're going to want to set to forever almost all the time, and then just go ahead and save it as the GIF. So if we go through some of these other ones, uh, let's look at this one, for instance. If we go to save for web, we're perfect, actually, 46, because in this one, we did adjust the timeline frame rate. Now this one again is 66. Now let me just preview this real quick. We'll see that it's really smooth and how it animates. Um, if we change the timeline frame rate down to 20, we'll see it's not quite as uh, smooth but that's not really a huge deal. Uh, it still does animate and it catches people's eye. Um, we're still not quite there, so we could probably change that down to 128. And now we're at 47. And then finally this one, we're perfect in being right at 47. So. Just to quickly recap, the uh, way we can get these uh, under appropriate levels is through changing these options up here and also changing the animation in the timeline. Uh, real quick, if this is one way that you can do it and change it down to 20 or a different uh, frame rate, the other way additionally would be to make these keyframes closer together and, and lesser in length and that will also help you be able to save these uh, and stay underneath the certain required uh, file size. 
Uh, and so that is it for this chapter. In the next, we're going to take a look at how we can take the whole process that we just went through and try to automate it as much as possible. All right, I'll see you then.